a current of 3 amps flows through a square coil that's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters and it has 20 loops of wires. Calculate the maximum torque that can be produced under these conditions. At the instant, the face of the coil is perpendicular to a magnetic field of a Tesla. So let's say this is the side view of the coil. And let's say we have a magnetic field directed east. Now let's say on the left side the current is coming out of the page. On the right side the current is going into the page. And here's the side view of the coil. So this is for a single coil. So on the left side the current is coming out of the page. And on the right side it's going into the page. So what is the direction of the force? on that part of the wire or the coil when the magnetic field is going east. So let's use the right hand rule. Place your thumb in the direction of the current. So let's go it on the page and use your other four fingers. Place it in the direction of the magnetic field. So here's the current. It's going out of the page. The magnetic field is going east and the force comes out of the palm of your hand. So in this case, if you use the right hand, it should be coming out or north. So the force on this side is north, and if we reverse the direction of the current, the direction of the force will be reversed too. So notice that these two forces will create a torque. Let's call this F1, F2. F1 will create a clockwise torque, which we'll call torque 1 or tau 1, and F2 will also create a clockwise torque. So these torques, they support each other. Therefore, the net torque is the sum of those two individual torques. So the net torque is going to be tau 1 plus tau 2. Now, torque 1 is F1 times R1. It's the product of the force and the level arm, where the level arm is the distance between the line of action of the force and the axis of rotation, which is right here. And torque 2 is going to be F2 times R2. So what's F in this example? Well, if we go back to our picture, where we have this picture, Let's focus on that part of the wire. So whenever you have a current flowing through a conductor or a wire, and that current is exposed to a magnetic field, the magnetic field will exert a force on the moving charges. And that magnetic force can be calculated using this equation. It's ILB sine theta. Now L is the length of the wire. So this is L. And let's call this the width of the wire. So we'll say that's W. So that means W is that part. It's equal to 2R, or R is half of W. So we can replace R with W divided by 2. A half plus a half is a whole, and these two forces are identical. So W over 2 plus W over 2, that's 2W over 2, which is W. So right now we have force times W. And now let's replace the force with ILB sine theta. So it's going to be ILB, or LW, times B sine theta. Now the length of the coil times the width of the coil will give us the area of the coil. So area is length times width. So right now we have this equation. It's the current times the area of the coil times the magnetic field times sine theta. Now if we have multiple coils or multiple loops, then we need to multiply this quantity by n. So this gives us the final equation.
The net torque acting on the coil is going to be NIAB sine theta. Now what exactly is theta? So let's say this is once again the side view of the coil. And this is the normal line of the coil. And let's say this is the magnetic field. Theta is the angle between the normal line and the magnetic field. Now the maximum torque occurs when the magnetic field is perpendicular to the normal line, which we have in this case. So under this situation, the torque will be a maximum. Now what's going to happen? Well, we have a net torque that's clockwise. So eventually, the coil, the side view of the coil, is going to look like this. At this point, we still have a current coming out of the page here and a current going into the page. Notice that the forces are anti-parallel. And also, the force is parallel to the lever arm, which means it creates no torque. And notice that the normal line is now parallel to the magnetic field, which means the angle between the normal line and the magnetic field is zero. So when that happens, sine theta is zero, and so there's not going to be any torque produced in this circumstance when the coil is oriented like this. So when the normal line is perpendicular to the magnetic field, psi 90 is 1, so that's when the maximum torque will be produced. But when the normal line is parallel to the magnetic field, sine 0 is 0, so there will not be any uh, torque produced. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and finish this problem. The maximum torque is going to equal the number of loops, which in this example is 20 loops, times the current, which is 3 amps, and then the area of the coil, length times width, that's uh, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, or 100 square centimeters. But we need to convert that to meters, so 0.1 meters multiplied by 0.1. That's going to be 0 0.01 square meters. And then the strength of the magnetic field, which represents B, that's 8 Tesla. And if we want the maximum torque, the angle has to be 90. So sine 90 is equal to 1. So 20 times 3 times 0 0.01 times 8. This is equal to 4.8. And the units are newtons times meters. So that's the maximum torque that this particular coil can produce under these conditions. Now let's calculate something else that is associated with this topic. And that is the magnetic dipole moment of the coil, represented by the symbol m. And the magnetic dipole moment is equal to n, the number of loops, times the current that flows through those loops, times the area of the coil. So we have 20 loops in this example. The current is 3 amps. And the area is 0 0.01 square meters. 20 times 3 is 60, and 60 times 0 0.01 is 0 0.6. So the magnetic dipole moment is 0 0.6, and the units is going to be, let's see. So n is the number of loops. It doesn't have a unit. The unit of current is amperes, or amps for short, and the unit for the area, that's square meters. So for the magnetic dipole moment, it's going to be amps times square meters. The magnetic dipole moment is a vector, and we need to talk about the direction of this vector. So let's say this is the face of the coil, and the direction is the same as the normal line, which is perpendicular to the surface or the, the face of the coil. And so the magnetic dipole moment is in the same direction as the normal line, which means that it's always perpendicular to the plane of the coil. 